So, so Channel 4 News is coming to watch you fishing today, are they? Yes, come right there. <laughs> and what are you gonna are you gonna win it today then? I'm gonna win it today if I get right, Peg. What peg do you want today? I'm not telling you. He want 16 and it won't be. I don't want 16. What bait are you gonna use? Which one? Oh I've got some new stuff today. <laughs> don't you mate? No. In date sweet corn. <laughs> no, no, not sweet corn. You want me today? Okay. Well, are you ready? Well, no. where, where, hey! Back on it. He can't help swearing, it's just him in it. Lovely but horrible. <laughs> we got a in here. Well, that was Zoe. So Peg 12. Sony. Nine. Peg nine. Barry. 18 Dave Eccles 22 Andy Gill 21 Magic Man 31 Mr Incredible 10 Simon Hudson 16! Oh, 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 oh. I've mentioned it on camera, that is the peg to be! Bob Huntington! 11! Nigel Boo! 30! Graham Scott! 14! Franny! That's Franny Hobson! 29! Me! 23! Richard Birch! 17! Christine! 5! Dave Sire! 28! Frank! 7! Kev! 8! Ronnie! 26. 26. Mark Hamilton. 24. Neil Milton. Hill Milton. 27. Tony Williamson. 25. Dave Fur. 6. Mick Smith. 13. Charles. 15 Jack Walsh 19 and St James 20 20 it's you right, that concludes your draw peg 23 not a bad area I hope we shall see you down there Right, absolutely, bugger all to do with fishing. But me and Jack just realised there's only a little conker tree behind us, but there are some mighty conkers on. Remember having to chuck sticks up? Here we go. Look at this, he's opening it up. Look at them belters. And for you kids, <laughs> look at this here. Look right down here, look at them all. Look at that one there, look, it's busting open. I had to show you that because I've spent hours chucking sticks up at conquer trees. <laughs> but they're mighty, look at them. Look at them all here. <laughs> I had to show you that. I'm sure Edley will have a bit of a laugh. See you soon.
Right, good morning fish people. I'm Alan Norris from Fish on TV. Right, I didn't, uh, it was that busy this morning, I didn't do the intro in my van. Uh, there's 27 of us today and today's match is our yearly memorial match in remembrance of Martin Middleton, um, who actually died here a couple of years ago, and Sarah Gray, one of our other fisher ladies. We've got Christine, a partner here. Um, both died far too young, so we're having a memorial match today. In remembrance of them, we've had a minute silence, though we sadly missed. And, uh, you know, it, it was a little bit uh, a little bit busy, so I had to get thing, things organised. We're here at Bank End, McCallum's farm, and we're on the Match Lake. 27 of us. It's going to be a lovely day, as you can see, I've got my shorts and t-shirt on. And I've actually drawn peg 23. Um, which isn't, it shouldn't be a bad area. I've always said anything, any, anywhere near this area eater or peg 15 and 16. In fact, peg 16 is into one now. That is the peg to beat. Um, having said that, Bob won a match from next door's peg, I think. I think he's about over 100 pound. Now, uh, peg 23. I've got about seven foot just in front of me, top two and two on a slight slope. I've tried there. I had a few little taps, I hooked into one, just pulled out, it was only a tiny little bite. And then I had nothing, I've been on there for half an hour. Uh, in the meantime, I just kept finding a few 8mm pellets, long, 8mm pellets. It's, uh, last time, bomb and pellet predominantly uh, dominated the way people caught the last time we was here. And the first two puttings, sorry, third putting, because I had a massive line, it took my line right over here. I keep firing a few pellets around about the 13 metre line, just there, and a little bit further. There you can see, see liners there, so is that telling me that just a few a little bit longer? Because I will, if I do try shallow, it'll be a mugging rig five foot lash on it so I'll be able to get to that sort of distance as well 14 meters plus so my main attack is going to be bomb and pellet I'm out there on the long line at the minute I've had two fish I've had one about six pound and one about two and a half to three pounds in three puttings it's been in now well three minutes I just keep aiming for Bob. Well, that's slightly to the left. Oh, a little bit too far, actually. That's feeding Bob's peg almost. That's more like it. Just keep firing. I'm not doing the 10 and 12 at a time. It's getting to that time of year. A little bit hit and miss. Half a dozen at the most. And they're, they're not, they don't mess about when you get a bite here. They're straight round. Uh, later on, I've plumbed up in the margin here. Apparently a guy caught quite a few on the left-hand margin. So I'd be daft to ignore that advice from somebody that's local. I will also be putting some pellets down here to my right. I'm going to keep putting one or two pellets short. It's on a five metre line round about there. But I will also be putting some under this tree and I'm going to underarm I've got a method feeder set up. I've got to give that a track. It's worked quite well, pretty much everywhere I've gone. It also gives me an option to put the method feeder either on the long bomb line or on this 13 metre line. Margin's down here. I've got a pellet waggler set up. I've just seen Steve have a go on it. He's not had anything on the pellet waggler. You can't, you cannot not set a pellet waggler up. It's, uh, like today, it's been warm for the last few days and there are fish showing the heads but I've seen that before and they've not really been interested so that's my main attack I've gone short I've had half an hour down here nothing out there on my bomb I've got a 13 meter line which I'll, I'll alternate those bomb lines or a method feeder line I can put the method feeder down there I'm gonna have a little go down here margins if I think pellet waggler or shallow will work they're available I've, I've got those set up 
Um, but I'm just going to try and keep it as simple as hopefully bomb and pellet, alternating lines. Maybe a switch to uh, method, keep trying short, margins, and I will be having a look under a feature there. So you've got to look at features, you've got to go under a feature. So that's where we are at the minute. Right, and I've just got the owner turning up here. Just two secs. Um, right, I'm just going to have a quick word with the owner. Um, so I'll give you some updates as we go along, so see you soon. longer having a chat with owner. David, the owner, I think that's the, the son of Mr and Mrs McCallum. Nice fella. And cast back out, second cast after he'd gone and Five minutes, 30 seconds, it went round. It just seems to have gone quiet for everybody. I know Mr Incredible was into one. Oh, Tony's into one. Bob's had a couple. Soz has had a couple. Not sure how. I know the guy in Peg 16's, he's definitely had one because he had one on, but uh, how many he's got, I'm not sure. Because I've been chatting for 10, 15 minutes. But we're back in again. Just kept the 13 metre, 14 metre line sort of baited up. A few pellets short. And I'm not going overkill with it. And the water here, I've got to say, the water here for some reason seems a lot warmer than the other places I've been to. Whether it's because it's deep, it is quite deep because when I'm casting the bomb out, I found my pellets and I cast about two, three yards past where my pellets have landed. And I'm trying to get it so the bomb sinks with the pellet leading behind it. So I'm pulling it towards me. And I've only got, I've not got a heavy pellet on it, so. stick as a landing net as one of my viewers said I can't remember who it was but it tickled deadly it's a mighty landing net handle it's a mighty landing net handle this browning browning hyper not the cheapest but well worth the money <laughs> watch just clipped off there I've coated my pellets in oil, it's like it's like a tuna flavour. Any fishy smell. I'll just show you what I'm doing. Aiming towards Bob. Don't be worried if your pellets are not exactly all tight. Because the carp do like to graze about, they don't stay in one spot. So it gives you a little bit of a it gives you a big target to aim for anyway, so actually that one miles out, that were a shite gas, wasn't it? <laughs> There were one or two pellets there, but not where I wanted it. I wanted it a bit more towards Bob. We'll have another go. We'll have another go. There, just beyond. That's about perfect, is that? And as you can see, let's sink in. And I just slowly reel it towards me. I don't want that pellet landing next to the uh, bomb. As you can see, do you see that fish top? There's fish topping. Again, Steve over there, he's on uh, 
pellet waggler and he's not had a bite. Bob's just landing one. What a mighty fisherman he is. There we go. There we are. Lovely. Just off the water. Right. I forgot how big that was, about five pounds, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm up to 14 pounds. It's been a bit of a slow start. We're, we're an hour and 15 minutes in. Like I say, I've had half an hour there. And I've been chatting, just discussing terms and you know things that we can do for if we're wanting to book the lake and all that sort of stuff, as you do. So, update later. See you soon. One minute twenty seconds that went round. Well, nice steady pull. Bob's just had another one again and bomb and pellet the look of it. Not seeing Sos catch anymore. Or Steve or Tony. The paste man. I think he's on bomb and pellet with the look of it. And it seems fairly quiet. I've not heard any splashing to my right. But Dave Eccles to my left. I think he's had one or two. I'm up to 17 pounds. I have had another one, a smaller one. Yeah. Another one about five, five pound-ish. Oh, nicely on up, thank you. That'll do. Okay. I'll just get a few more pellets out there. There's a bit of a breeze just getting up now. Right to left. Four pellets. And four more. So anywhere in, in Bob's pegs at that sort of dis that sort of width. Let's go beyond. Click the bail arm over, so it will be, as it's sinking, it will be coming towards me. That's just at the bottom. You can see how deep it is. It is quite a light bomb, so it goes in like in the same noise as a pellet. So your line doesn't sink as quick, but there we are, that's just... Sunk nicely. Let's see if that goes round in a minute and 20 seconds, eh? But yeah, I think it's been a good effort. Um, Ronnie donated £30 from his winnings last week. Brian Forry was supposed to come today, but he, he didn't feel very well this morning. He's put 20 quid in. Dave Schofield. He's put uh, a tenner in. And then we're, we're charging everybody. It's eight pounds a peg, five pound pulls. And then the proceeds goes to, I think it's Ruffs it's called. It was something that was close to Sarah's heart, was the dog rescue, Ruffs rescue it's called. So we've got 250 quid going there. I think that's a mighty effort, mighty. 
and it sounds like somebody's just lost a fish because I've just heard Bob say nobody likes to see that. I do, Bob. Is it going to go round? And tomorrow, I'm down at Barson Lakes. Never fished it before. Last round of the UK Angling Championships. Not doing very well as far as points go, but the last round that I had at the Glebe. Brilliant, loved it. And there was only 20 odd pound between first and last. And I happened to come fifth out of sixth with 106 or 107 pounds. So even though I had a really enjoyable cracking day, good crack with Darren, Darren Acton, I still came fifth out of sixth with 106 or 107 pounds. Ah oh dear. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I had two awful draws first two rounds, not a lot you can do about that. I mean I know I caught fifty pounds at decoy but that was shocking. It, uh, you need hundred pound plus to be anywhere near getting sort of halfway up your section. I know what's going to happen here, I'm going to say, well, it don't look like it's going to go around, but there's something there, because I've just had a few sort of slight liners. The fish milling about. That's my short line, which is all, always worth a try later on. I've got my bump. Long bomb line, and I keep putting a few there. I keep feeding this more often than I do my bomb line, just to see if I can get them shallow. There you see a few little taps on it. I always tend to think when the taps like that, the skin is or something. I just keep putting four or five pellets out there. Let's just see if I can bring them up. If they don't come up, we can always go on the bomb. Well, that's been in three minutes. No decent bite, so we'll give you some updates soon. Right, it's went dead for half an hour. A little go mugging and shallow, nothing. Kept putting a few pellets on the long bomb line and I've just gone on the method feeder with a little speedies washer on. And that's been in two minutes twenty seconds and it went straight round. With ground bait, which is a little bit heavier mix than I'd normally do because it's deep here, so wanting the ground bait to stay on. Right, it's about three pound ish, three and a half pound. So that takes me weight up to. Let's have a look. Can't remember what I got. It's that long since I used my clicker. I'll put three on for it. One, two, three, twenty-eight. And Bob's just had a couple on his short line, which I keep feeding that one. Not too many pellets. Always worth a little try back, is that? So there we go. Twenty-eight pound. I've not seen anybody really bagging. But I can't see all to my right. You never know where the top ends. 
doing well or not. Ground bait, and it's ground bait I've been putting in. I've not clipped up with it being open water, like I said, there's a big area to aim for where I've been finding my pellets, so I'm not too worried. As you can see, my pellets there, and then I just put a little bit in the bottom, just hopefully, so on its way down, the top layer will come off when it lands on the bottom. In theory, it will reveal my hook bait. All right, I'll take a little squeeze. Bob's my target, that won't fire off. That's just at the bottom. No dragging it, we don't move the feeder, remember. I just sit there. And with this method, you know if you get a bite while you've got it on your knee like this while you're line sinking, because your rod just goes straight round. It's a semi-bolt rig. That's just sunk. There we are. Oh, that didn't. That wasn't a carp indication. A little tap on that. I'm guessing it's skimmers and roach around the ground bait. Put the timer on. few pellets, not too many. It's getting to that time of year, it's funny, you don't want to be overfeeding it and killing your peg. Like I say, we're firing two and three pellets at about 13 to 15 metres, try and bring them up. So I'm not refeeding that for a while because I had nothing shallow. I'll probably just go, probably fire maybe half a dozen pellets and go over that with the bomb. I could even go over it with this if I wanted. So 20, what did I say, I've got 20, 28 pounds, three hours to, more than three and a quarter hours to go. So we're steady away, nothing prolific. And we've got a few little indications there. Again, little taps like this suggest to me that it's probably skimmers and roach, small fish around the feeder. We want one of those great 10 pound carp taking it. I keep throwing a few pellets down there to the right under the tree. That's for a bit later on. Not constantly throwing down there, just a few. And drizzling a few on my short line. Because I don't think you've noticed when you're on these commercials, you'll go in or you'll throw some pellets and you see a big bow wave as they go out, so I'm pretty sure they're in and out all day. Oh, I thought that was going to be a, a take then. It just stopped. No, nope, something I had to think about it anyway. There we are, just anyway, nothing prolific. Quite happy so far, I just hope I can put another 30 pounds in the net before it's margin time. 30 or 40 pounds would be nice. I think 100 pounds today will smash the match from what I've seen, but I don't know what they're doing up, up there. You just never know. Maggot Man's up to the right on the end peg, I think. Franny's up there. Jeff's to my left. Got my eye on Soz over there. He's not doing too much. Mr. Incredible's not having... I don't think I ain't seen him catch too many. I've seen Tony with the odd one or two. There we go. Ah, 
Oh, a strange, strange old bite. I don't think it's the biggest. Probably an F1 or something, I'm guessing. Might even be just a bream, I don't know. Doesn't feel very big. And that was three minutes. Probably an F1 then, I think. F1 or small car. It's darting about like a little one. Small ones go crazy, the big ones just seem to lull about. Yeah, small near a cat. Right, there we go. Oh, thank you very much. Right, we'll get back in. We'll see if we can get another one. Right, a bit of an update for you. There's two and a quarter hours left and the whole pond's just died to death. I've not seen anybody catching. Um, it's 50 minutes since I last had a bite. I've just had to change some pellet here. I've just gone onto a slightly lighter bottom B9118 up with a small piece of corn with micros. I've had one little indication, but nothing to shout about. Um, I've kept putting a few pellets on my long line. It just went dead everywhere it is. Nobody's catching. Bob's had the odd little little one. I think he's using chopworm and caster now. But I've not seen anybody with a car from the, from the people that I can see. So not a lot to shout about. Crap update. Um, I've been on this for about 15 minutes now and it's not looking good. I will be feeding my margins, we're fishing wild for it's quarter to two, about two o'clock-ish. I'm going to put some bait down in my margin and just see if we can get anything. So, let's just sit here, get back ache, I don't know, I always seem to, ooh, miss that one I'm talking about. See, Bob's just catching odd little, little roach and skimmer. go. Ah. Typical, isn't it? Get a little look on, and now I've got a carp. <laughs> you can't write it, can you? Delicate little bite as well. But if it goes under, it goes under. End of. Gentle with it, aren't I? B911s. Let's see if it holds it. This late teen hook. Just going on a little run. Just got to be patient, aren't you, when it's small hooks and lighter bottom, lighter line. Not too worried about the line, it's just a tiny hook.
The intention was I, I put a small piece of corn and small oak walls. If the skimmer's about, I'll have those, but the way things are going, I wasn't really expecting this. I've not seen anybody have a cart for ages. Come on, fishy, let's let's have you gliding in. Come to Alan, behave yourself now. Show these fishy people what a mighty fisherman I am. <laughs> mighty. <laughs> oh, the crowd go berserk. There we go. Well, it's been a while, but it'll do. That'll do, pig. Oh, top lip perfect. That wasn't coming out. Just show you a little sweet corn fish. If he'll behave. Will he behave for the camera? There we go. Nice one. Sweet corn, it's the future today. <laughs> Don't think anything's the future today. It's not exactly on fire. First fish in 55 minutes, I think. Right, let's get back in. See this next put in, this has been on a right old merry run. Is it foul hooked? I think it might because it's it, it not even settled. Oh. Bloody hell, it was foul hooked. I'm going to say it had not even settled and it went straight under the flow. I've had that on for ages. Eh. Just about to get its tail out. No wonder it went crazy. <laughs> I hate see so. Right, I've not had hooked. Uh, since we last checked in, but it's only 10 15 minutes ago. Soz has just started catching his margin. I fed mine about 10 minutes ago. So I'm not going to go in just yet. Bob's catching short. Most people have just started catching short. Well, I'm saying the people. Oh, Peg 16. He's catching. That's nice to see. Peg 16, if that, if that clicks on in the margins there, that will take some beating. That's a right peg. Just not getting the response I was after. I thought when I got that second one, you don't like losing fish, don't nobody likes to see that. I thought we might have a flurry of fish, but uh, I've had one little tap. It's just gone quiet again. I've kept refeeding the bomb line. I've got to go down there in the next sort of 15 minutes and have a look. See if anything's turned up. Oh, he's taking his jacket off to Soz. He's, he means business. He means business. Oh, yes, he thinks he's in weird. He's been shouting at me. I don't know if he's shouting. I just told him it was Wednesday. It's in, it's Tuesday, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Right, little update for you. Oh, so the battle begins, but look of it, people start catching at last. See you soon. I just went on the bomb on the long line. I kept feeding. Four and a half minutes later, he went round. Soz has had another. Peg 16's had another. Mr. Incredible's had another. Bob's into one, so people have just started catching. I've noticed, and Peg 16's in again, and I've noticed his fish are a damn sight bigger than this. And when Soz were down there, I did notice them ringer. The fish did seem to be a lot bigger down that end in that on that peg. Um, I did tell him where to fish as well. Might have made a mistake there. But you, you know, you've got to give people in for as a guest today in our memorial match. But could that be a costly mistake? He was going to try and get near the reeds and stuff, but. Uh, they're not always there. 
and it's it, you're asking for trouble as well. I think I've mentioned it before. They go, they head straight for them reeds. So another five minutes. So I'll have a quick look at my margin. It's usually the last hour I like to go in there, but there's an hour, an hour and thirty-five. Get back out. See if we can get another one. So I've got about thirty-seven pounds-ish. Yeah, nice size fishies catching down there. They look like six, seven pounder, eight pounders. Them these catching on peg sixteen. Oh dear, told him where to fish, damn it. <laughs> oh, that's your little update. It's getting all exciting. See you soon, big finale. Oh, what a quick look in the margin and, as usual, roach. So I've gone back out on the pellet on the 13 to 15 metre line and this is the second one I've had. Soz has slowed down a bit. The guy on peg 16 is still catching. He's into one now. I think he's going to take some beating today. They're all decent fish as well. And I'm sure I've just seen him fishing shallow. Twice the size as this. These are like three pound. These look like the six and seven, so you, you're struggling, aren't you, when you're catching small ones? But it's fish. Hey, we'll get back. I've just had another one. And Mr. Incredible's into one. He looks slightly to my right. He is concentrating. He's got a mighty fish on, mighty. That was in 40 seconds. I'm using six mil pellet on the pellet on the uh, short bomb line. I've refed my margin. Yeah, peg 16 is fishing shallow, just, just thin him, flick it over. Whee! Little bit angry, isn't he? A bit angry. But yeah, I had a real, quite had an hour without anything really. It's uh, just stopped me in my tracks a bit. He's not happy about being hooked, this one. And you would be. He's, he's off. It's not even that big, he's just very angry. Oh, it's not bad, actually, it's bigger than I thought. He's got to be a six pounder.
better fish. No, not a six pounder, it's just a little chunky one. Chunky unit. There we go, little chunky unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's get back in and get another one. Right, I just flicked. We're getting roach in the margin or roach bites. So I just flicked a method feed in there, them reeds, and it's just gone round. Caught Dave, went screaming. Caught Dave Eccles's line. It's come, I think it's come off, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I think yours has come off. I think your line's come off. And it's biggest fish at day, this one. If we can keep it on. Yes, a nice fish. They're what we're wanting. Eight pound plus. Look at that for a unit. Cheers, Dave. That's a good eight, good eight pounder. Not bad at all, at all. So, I've got to have a look down there because these margins just can't seem to get bites in them at all. Apart from roach. In the story of my life this year, we uh, margins. So we'll get back in. 15 to 18 minutes to go. Fisher people, we are all weighed in. What a breath. All those people to weigh in. And I've got the results here. Right, what a cracking day as far as the weather goes. Beautiful weather, can't complain. I mentioned earlier, I've got uh, Barson Lakes tomorrow in the final round of the UK Champs. I've not. <laughs> I've not done very well. Well, actually, the last round, I had a cracking day. I caught plenty of fish, and I ended up fifth in section out of six, which still kept me down the bottom end. But I ain't bothered about that. It's been a great experience. 
got to know quite a few people who are more than willing to give you advice on certain fisheries that you've never fished. Again, Barston Lakes, never fished it before. Um, apparently it's fishing quite difficult. Um, so, you know, bits of information I've got is you've got to, if you draw a carp peg, you've got to, it's got to be carp. If you don't draw such good areas, then, you know, don't ignore skimmers. So that's the approach I'll be going for. I'll have a long line, I'll have a short method feed, a bomb line. Don't think the pellet waggler is going to come into it tomorrow. It's going to be cold tomorrow, but you just never know. And a, I'll probably go for, I've been told the five, six meter line is good for small skimmers. 11 to 13 meters for the mums and dads. So I think I'm going to go for the mums and dads on 11 to 13 meter line. Get it plumbed up, see what it's like. See what the wind's like, and take it from there. So hopefully we shall have a decent day tomorrow at Bass and Lakes. Right, today's fishing, bank end. It was our yearly memorial match. There were 27 of us. We've, I think I mentioned earlier, we've raised 250 pounds for Ruff's Rescue, which was dear to Sarah. Um, Sarah Gray, who passed away a month or so ago. Uh, not forgetting Martin Middleton as well. So that's what it's been in aid of. It's been a great day, all the lads have enjoyed it, the guests and friends of Martin and Sarah, uh, great to see you, I hope you've enjoyed yourself and I hope you're back next year. Right, and one of the guests did quite well. My match today, I was quite happy with the area. Um, I nearly started immediately on the bomb line because I know that this venue can't have produce on bomb. But I just can't ignore that short line because you can pick three or four fish up you can end up with anything from ten pound to twenty pound in your first hour no problem if they're there but they weren't there i lost one carp hooked into it, it was only on for a few seconds don't think i've hooked it well and then i went on the bomb and within a minute or so straight into a fish so you know i could have had me 20 pound immediately you just don't know dear so the bomb lines i had two bomb lines i had a, the long one towards the aerator and one about 13 meters 13 to 15 meters which i tried shallow i was priming that for shallow but nothing happened i've heard of couples caught on pellet waggler i wish i'd tried that because they did catch but i did see steve have a go he had no join the pellet waggler so i ignored that today when i had that quiet hour maybe i could have had a go maybe i could have picked a few fish maybes it's all maybes into ifs and buts um I had a couple of the short line again on corn, you saw me make the change. I had nothing under the tree, which I, I will put in bait down. Margins, this side, I've caught well in margins on that side, and they have, on the other side, they, in the end, they have caught well in the margins. These margins are a lot deeper, and it's as if there's something dead in the edge. I don't know, you, your float moves, but you plumb, plumb it, don't it? It's, it's very, very, it's the strange margin, so I ended up going in the end at the edge of the platform where it seems flatter but I just had nothing I think I had a roach um, I've, I've struggled this year from with margins I'm, I'm gonna have to have a, a re uh, I'm gonna have to have a good practice in margins I think and get get my head around that one there's something not quite happening I don't know whether I'm not patient enough I don't know I, I don't like spending more than five or ten minutes in a margin if there's nothing happening I go back to doing what I'm doing refeed and try again and that's what I've always done and I've always done okay but this year I've, I've struggled in the end, I think, the next time I fish this side, the margin line, I'm going to go to the edge of the reeds because I flicked a method feeder down to the left, just on the edge of the reeds where it is still quite deep. And I ended up with about 18 pounds of fish in 20 minutes. So that bumped my weight up a little bit. I've ended up today with, where am I? 65 pounds, 34. It's measured in 100s. It's digital scales, just in case somebody's wondering what the silly numbers are. And I've come seventh out of 27. So, average day, quite pleased. Caught, caught a few fish, gorgeous day. Good crap with the lads. What more do you want? Right. One of our guests, another guest, where is he? Where is he? Richard Birch. Drew Peg 17. He's not fished very many matches, but he's still caught 61 pound 12. So, well done today, Richard. Nice to meet you. I know you watch my videos and stuff, and he's actually using my little tactics because he, he was sick of losing rigs on the margins. He's flicked a method feeder down there, and he's ended up catching quite a few fish. So, proves it does work. Sometimes it can be a good option. It's not something I prefer to go with first, but it can be a good option. So, well done, Richard. What a mighty fisherman you've been today. Well done, son. I hope you've enjoyed it. Right. 
the top four. Let's get to the mightiest fisherman. In fourth place, caught in his margins in the end. Jeff Vaughs, my old pal Jeff with £77.52, he's having a good run, he won last week. So what a mighty fisherman you are, enjoying his fishing again, well done son. He's forgot his money, but I always get pocket money off him, straight to the pub for me, get the 15 quid spent, nice one. <laughs> Cheers Jeff. In third place, he hasn't been with us for a while because he's had an operation, but he wanted to make the memorial match in, uh, both friends of, of Mick Smith. He's come third as Mick Smith with £79.90 from peg 13. Oh, Richard, Richard was on peg 17. Jeff was on peg 20. Decent areas, all of those. Mick Smith has come in with £79.90. Thought he got 80, so not a bad guess. What a mighty fisherman you are, Mick. And he's caught on the line I was on about, just at the edge of the reeds, uh, a little bit further out. So well done, Mick. In second place. God does beat me up and I told you he started catching it margins and he's been giving me some chelp he didn't give me to in fact he wasn't there for me to give him some chelp when I smashed him up at Swanlands he buggered off but he's giving he's been giving me large today he's coming with 97 pound 38 I know that he's got most of his fish from the margin it's the lovely horrible bloke himself Soz well done Soz you are a mighty fisherman today, £97.38, so well done, son. As much as I bloody hate to see it. And in first place, it's a friend of Martin Middleton, they used to work together, a guest today. He's come in on peg 16, I said that peg, I know we've had some warm days, I knew that peg would produce today with £139 in first place, and this week's mightiest fisherman the old boy's mightiest fisherman is Simon Hudson so the pressure was on him I told him where, where he'd be catching and he's actually fished a few different things he's caught shallow as well and he's, he's done the work so what a mighty fisherman you are well done son and I hope you've enjoyed the day hope to see you all back next year and I'm, I'm rabbiting on I hope you've enjoyed today's little insight to the memorial match at Bankend Fishery Cracking Fishery loads of room on the pegs if you've never fished it before, you need to try it, it's belting. So, I shall see you on the bank at Barson Lakes and let's hope I have a good draw and plenty of fish and see if I can move up that leaderboard. So thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs> it's a bloody time.